Uh, let's start with you. Good morning, by the way. Morning. Morning. Uh, morning. Good morning. Uh, let's start with you, Nikki, and this big story front page of the of uh, a number of the papers. Actually, I think we're going to concentrate on the Daily Mail here. A very simple headline: yes. manhunt. Yes, and this is the manhunt for Abdul Azidi, who is the man wanted in connection with um, a burning of a mother and two young daughters. They were doused in a corrosive chemical. Uh, in Clapham yesterday and this guy is now on the run mm. he is an Afghan refugee he was granted uh, sorry he was turned down for asylum twice before he he finally was a uh, granted it and he arrived illegally in this country on the back of a lorry he has also been convicted of a sexual assault exposure offense two years after he arrived that's really instrumental in this case in this story because I think we've seem to think that exposure offences are very kind of minor, mm. but they very much often go on to, uh, you know, generate a greater offence. Sarah Everard. I, exactly, Sarah Everard and um, Wayne Cousins, who was the guy that had exposed himself and then obviously went on to murder Sarah. And uh, this, this event, this acid attack or alkaline attack, is really a crime of misogyny because it is really done by men to women. Generally well, that, speaking. And there's a, an article in one of the other papers which lists that the numbers, the, the huge rise in these kind of attacks on women up by something like 67%, uh, Fraser. I mean, it is absolutely terrifying. It, it happened not far from where I live. And then when you see the picture on the Daily Telegraph um, of the face of uh, the man, that's the injuries he inflicted on himself yeah. inadvertently mm, yeah. in this attack. Just imagine what it would have been like it for is, that woman to have had this acid thrown in her eyes. It is absolutely unimaginable. It's hard to comprehend the, the, the sort of evil that would want to do that, that would want to inflict that kind of harm on someone. Uh, and you know, other papers are reporting that it seems like he might have made this journey deliberately. That the the it's not confirmed whether he knows the woman, but he certainly made a 300-mile journey from Newcastle to London before carrying out this attack. Um, so there's a dimension there that, that um, more will come out, I'm sure. Mm. Um, but, yeah, as Nikki said, I think the question on a lot of people's minds is, why is this man in this country? Correct. How and that many? is the headline. So yeah. it says, chemical attacker was failed asylum seeker. Here we are again, aren't we? Yeah. So this man, as you rightly say, came here from Afghanistan on the back of a lorry, underneath a lorry or whatever, came into this country, then obviously, as we know, committed a sexual offence, was turned down for asylum twice. Then he said, oh, I've converted to Christianity and allowed to stay in this country. And, yeah. and that goes back to a much bigger issue. Absolutely. What is he doing in this country? Absolutely. And, and you know, the fact... How many, to, as you say, the two, the two failed application, um, uh, uh, asylum applications were points at which he should have been deported. The sexual offence is a point at which he should have been deported. But you're right to raise the uh, conversion to Christianity. This is actually a very common theme mm. in bogus asylum applications. People might remember, do you remember that horrific attempt to bomb uh, the maternity ward in yes. Liverpool? Mm. So Emad L. Sweelman also did a fake conversion to Christianity. It was found uh, later on that he was still a practicing Muslim because what uh, asylum seekers can claim to the authorities is they'll say, well, I will be persecuted as a Christian uh, if I'm sent back. They've and never I, showed I mean, any inclination to be Christian no, before. But I mean, this is just so ridiculous. How are we having these naive priests or vicars just proclaim that this person is converted and genuine? I mean, mm. it, there's got to be some more interrogation of that. What is so disturbing about the story is the details of the harm he inflicted on the two little girls particularly the three-year-old who was flung to the floor, according to witnesses, repeatedly. repeatedly, didn't even move so that one of the witnesses thought she was dead and then said, I want my mum. You know, I, mm. I can feel myself getting emotional just mm. thinking about it with my own daughter. I cannot believe that you would go after two little girls like this as well. And, and just, just in terms of the general outrage here, this plays back into immigration. Mm. I have said for a long time this election will be about illegal migration and legal migration into this country. This comes on the back of the fact that uh, the Home Office seems to have lost 6,000 people. I don't know where they are. I don't think they know where yeah. people uh, people have gone. But, but what's your sense? I mean, not only is this an outrageous attack, but I think actually people are will be saying we have completely lost control of the borders yeah. of this country and actually governments have lost the plot i think so and i think they'll be right and i think what you know people will have the sense that whether it's people in the home office whether it's the sort of human rights establishment whether it's lawyers and judges 
that ultimately they side with um, illegal migrants over the safety of people in this country. I, I think it's impossible to draw any other conclusion, unfortunately. But, yeah, but it's not this just a story about happening. immigration, is it? It is, as you made the point, also a story about misogyny and this misogyny is and evil. An, yeah. an attack yes. on a woman in Absolutely. the most brutal Absolutely. fashion, yeah. using something that disfigures somebody and, and, it, and it limits the person to their looks you know that's the whole that's why it's so misogynistic because it, it presumes that somebody's only their looks and I, I mean no choice. why you say it's misogynistic because yeah. if it was carried out by a woman against a man it would have the same effects of course so it would but it very rarely is David. that's why the I'm main. saying it, it, women, in, are the, women are the victims I, mean, I was just picking you up on that but but you're right so so you carry those scars with you forever yes. and and that's why I think this is so horrendous in many ways if it was a knife attack for example you may not see the knife injury no which of in course isn't going to subsume the mental uh, damage and upset that you sustain but the very point is that it is designed to kind of ruin appearance ruin somebody else having you ruin somebody else accepting you i saw and that's an, why it's misogynistic. an interview with with um uh, an acid attack victim yesterday who described it as wiping my identity mm. and yeah. i felt that was extraordinarily mm. powerful uh, testimony